In your journey of personal development, focus on honing these five capabilities, which I refer to as the five abilities. Here's the first one. Develop the ability to absorb. Picture yourself as a sponge, eagerly poised to soak up every drop of knowledge and experience in your path, much like you're doing today. Take heed not only of the words being spoken, but also of the very essence of the moment itself. Absorb the rich tapestry of colors, the subtle nuances of atmosphere, and the intricate scenarios unfolding before you. In a world where many people merely strive to survive each day, your aspiration should transcend mere existence. It should encompass the pursuit of thriving. Each day presents a unique opportunity for growth and learning. Embrace every experience as a valuable lesson, allowing it to enrich your understanding and perspective. Transform each moment into a classroom in the university of life, where you are both the student and the scholar, continually expanding your knowledge and wisdom. By cultivating the ability to absorb, you open yourself up to a world of possibilities and opportunities. You become adept at recognizing the subtle intricacies of life and extracting meaningful insights from even the most mundane of encounters. Instead of merely passing through life, you actively engage with it, soaking up every bit of wisdom and understanding it has to offer. So as we embark on this journey of personal development, remember to approach each day with a sponge-like mentality, eager to absorb and learn from every experience. Let the world around you be your classroom and embrace the richness of life's teachings with an open heart and mind. Secondly, let's explore the ability to respond. This skill involves allowing life to touch you deeply. It's about not letting life overwhelm you, but rather letting it affect you in meaningful ways. When sad things happen, it's okay to feel sad. Similarly, when happy moments occur, embrace that joy. It's essential to give in to your emotions, allowing them to resonate with you on a profound level. My friends, remember that it's not just about understanding the words or seeing the images. It's about letting the emotions behind those words and images strike you. Let yourself be moved by the feelings that arise within you. This is crucial because our emotions need to be just as well developed as our intellect. Knowing how to feel and respond to life's experiences is vital for personal growth and development. We've already discussed the first two abilities on our journey towards personal growth. The ability to absorb where we emphasize the importance of paying close attention and not missing anything in a rapidly changing world. In the 90s, the mantra was to pay attention, and it's just as relevant today. So take in the vibrant colors, the rich sounds, and everything else happening around you. The second ability, which we're exploring now, is the ability to respond. It's about allowing life's experiences to touch you deeply, both emotionally and visually. When you respond to life in this way, you're opening yourself up to growth and transformation. You're embracing the full spectrum of human experience, from the depths of sadness to the heights of joy. By honing these abilities to absorb and to respond, you're laying the foundation for personal development and growth. You're not just existing, you're actively engaging with life and all it has to offer. So as we continue on this journey, remember to stay present, to soak up every moment, and to let life touch you deeply. It's through this process of absorption and response that we truly come alive. So in summary, the first two abilities on your personal development journey are absorption, paying meticulous attention to every detail, and responsiveness, allowing life's experiences to deeply affect you both intellectually and emotionally. In the rapidly changing landscape of the 90s and beyond, remember the watchword, pay attention. Immerse yourself in the colors, the sounds, and the essence of life unfolding around you. Now let's talk about the third ability, reflect. Reflecting means going back over things, studying them again. Review the notes you're taking today. Revisit the cassettes once more. Reread the text again. But it's more than just that. Reflect on your day. Take some time at the week's end. Set aside time to reflect. Look back at your day planner, your calendar, your appointment book. Where did you go? Who did you see? How did it all feel? Capture the essence of the week. A week is a substantial chunk of time. Next, allocate half a day at the end of each month for reflection. Repeat the process. Review what you've read, heard, seen, and felt. Capture it so that it serves you going forward. At the year's end, take a weekend to firmly establish the year in your consciousness, in your bank of experiences, ensuring it never fades away. Developing the ability to reflect is valuable. Remember, remember, remember. 
It's incredibly beneficial to recall the thoughts, ideas, experiences, occasions, days, weather, emotions, complexities, highs, and lows. Walk in each day, each month, each week, each year. In ancient times, there was a unique scenario. It worked for nine years and took the tenth year as a sabbatical. The tenth year wasn't just for relaxation or physical replenishment, it was a time for reflection. They would go over the past nine years, analyzing what went right and what went wrong, what worked well and what didn't, how they grew, what they learned, and how they changed. Here's number four. Develop the ability to act. Take action when you have a good idea and feel excited. Don't wait too long to do something about it. If you want to build a library like someone you admire, don't just think about it. Start by getting your first book, then keep going. Before your excitement fades away, act quickly, but don't rush. If you delay, you might lose your motivation, and your idea might never become a reality. This idea is important because it's easy to lose interest in things over time. When you first think of something, you're full of energy and enthusiasm. But if you don't act fast, that energy fades away, and you might forget about your idea altogether. So when you're feeling motivated and have a clear plan, don't waste any time, take action right away. It's all about building good habits. When you feel inspired to do something, like improving your health or starting a new project, take the first step immediately. Don't wait for the perfect moment, just get started. By taking action straight away, you're more likely to stick to your goals and achieve success. For example, let's say you want to get healthier. If someone tells you about a great book on nutrition and it gets you excited, don't hesitate. Go and buy the book or look it up online right away. Start learning and making changes to your diet as soon as possible. That way, you'll keep up your momentum and see results faster. Remember, the key is to act when your emotions are strong and your ideas are clear. Don't let opportunities slip away because you waited too long. By taking action quickly and consistently, you'll turn your dreams into reality and make progress towards your goals. And the final ability is the ability to share. Pass it on to someone else. If you've gained a valuable insight today, don't let it fade away. Share it with others. Share a book if you found it impactful. Say, I found a book that really helped me, got me thinking, changed my health, inspired me. Share it, share it, share it. The beauty of sharing is this. If you share with 10 people, they hear it once, but you hear it 10 times. It probably benefits you more than it does them, but it's a win-win situation. Share your ideas, experiences, knowledge. You can derive as much joy as I do from giving this seminar. It's one of my life's joys to invest my words, spirit, heart, soul, time, and energy. I could take it easy, but I choose to work hard because I want the return. Your words touch my life deeply. You can't buy this with money, but recommending a book can start the same journey for someone else. They'll read it, then another, and another, until they come back to you saying, you got me started. That book you recommended changed my life. You can receive as much praise as I do if you share. Share with your children, colleagues, everyone within your reach. Sharing not only benefits you and the person you share with, but it also makes you bigger. Imagine yourself a glass of water. Can it hold more if it's already full? Yes, but you must pour out what's inside. If you're full of ideas, pour them out. Pour them out again and again. More will be poured in. Pouring out makes you bigger. Humans have limitless capacity for growth in consciousness, awareness, and ability. Kids in Europe speak multiple languages. They don't lack capacity. They simply need the guidance and encouragement to unlock their potential. The same principle applies to you. By sharing what you have, you expand your capacity for growth and self-improvement. I share for a selfish reason. My consciousness expands when I share. If I share with you, I get to hear it again. How am I doing with all this stuff? It's easier to talk about than to do, but I'm working on it, just like you. Pour out what you've got, and your capacity will grow. Why should you want to grow? To hold more of life's experiences. I'll admit I share for a selfish reason. My consciousness expands when I share. It's a continuous journey of growth and self-discovery, and I'm committed to it, just like you. So pour out what you've got, and watch as your capacity for life's experiences expands exponentially. After all, the more you share, the more you'll be able to hold and appreciate life's rich tapestry of experiences. In conclusion, as we journey through the path of personal development, we must remember these five essential abilities. The ability to absorb, respond, act, reflect, and share. 
Each of these skills plays a crucial role in our growth and evolution as individuals. We must learn to absorb knowledge and experiences like a sponge, actively engaging with the world around us and extracting valuable lessons from every encounter. Furthermore, we must develop the ability to respond to life's challenges and joys with authenticity and emotional intelligence, allowing ourselves to be deeply touched by the richness of human experience. Taking action is paramount in translating our ideas and inspirations into tangible outcomes. We must seize the moment when our emotions are high and our intentions are clear, ensuring that we do not let opportunities slip away due to hesitation or procrastination. Reflection serves as a vital tool for learning and growth, allowing us to review and internalize our experiences, distilling wisdom from both our successes and failures. Finally, sharing our insights, knowledge, and experiences with others not only enriches their lives but also expands our own capacity for growth and understanding. The major value in life is not what you get. The major value in life is what you become. By honing these five abilities, we not only enhance our own lives but also contribute positively to the world around us. So let us commit to cultivating these skills diligently, for it is through continuous learning, action, reflection, and sharing that we truly become the best versions of ourselves. My life took a significant turn when I grasped this simple philosophy. Invest more effort in self-improvement than in your job. This principle, which I adopted at 25, has been a game-changer. Working hard at your job earns you a living, which is good, but working hard on yourself can earn you a fortune, which is even better. Initially, I didn't mind putting in the hard work at my job, but I didn't see much change. It was only when I began to invest in myself that things started to shift. Let me express this philosophy in a more philosophical manner. Success is something you attract, not something you pursue. It comes by becoming attractive yourself. This whole process is what we call personal development. You can have more than you currently do because you can become more than you are. If you can increase your value threefold, fivefold, you can easily multiply your income by the same margin. But the key is to work hard on yourself. This involves learning multiple skills, perhaps even multiple languages. Working on yourself can be challenging because sometimes the hardest person to work with is yourself. You may ask yourself why you're reluctant when you should be excited. This is where the real work lies. My first mentor, Mr. Schaff, used to say that the world is mostly full of nice people, with only about 11 or 12 truly unpleasant individuals. He said they tend to move around a lot, so you might encounter one occasionally. But if you do, just remember, there are only a handful of them in the world. You can handle that. However, the real challenge lies in working on yourself, your personality, temperament, mindset, and cultural understanding. All these are essential for becoming a responsible, growing, attractive, powerful, and skillful communicator. Once you master these aspects, the world belongs to you. Are you ready to take control of your life? Are you tired of living by other people's rules, letting them dictate what you can and cannot do? If so, listen carefully. Never disclose what you do. Many of us live our lives confined by the expectations and limitations imposed by others. We allow their doubts and criticisms to hold us back from reaching our full potential. But it doesn't have to be that way. You have the power to break free and live life on your own terms. Imagine for a moment what your life could be like if you stopped caring about others' opinions, stopped seeking their approval and validation. If you had the courage to pursue your dreams and ambitions without fear of judgment or ridicule, that's the life that awaits you when you embrace the philosophy of never revealing what you do. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, isn't it important to consider others' opinions? And you're right, to an extent. We shouldn't be selfish and inconsiderate. But there's a difference between being considerate and letting others control your life. When you tell people what you do, you're giving them the power to dictate your actions. You're allowing them to plant seeds of doubt and negativity in your mind. But when you adopt the mindset of never revealing what you do, you reclaim that power. You take back control of your life and destiny. You become the captain of your own ship, charting a course towards your dreams and ambitions without being beholden to anyone else's expectations or limitations. Some of you might worry, won't that make me seem arrogant or self-centered? Absolutely not. In fact, it's quite the opposite. When you live by the philosophy of never disclosing what you do, you're actually being more considerate and respectful of others. Think about it this way. When you seek the approval and validation of others, you're essentially saying that their opinions matter more than your own. 
But when you never reveal what you do, you're acknowledging that your life is your own to live, and that you alone get to decide what's best for you. And let me tell you something. People respect that kind of self-assurance and confidence. They may not always agree with your decisions, but they'll respect the fact that you're living life on your own terms, and that you're not letting anyone else dictate what you can and cannot do. Now, I know that embracing this mindset isn't always easy. We've been conditioned from a young age to seek the approval of others, to conform to societal norms and expectations. But if you want to truly live a life of freedom and fulfillment, you have to be willing to break free from those chains. Once you do, it's like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders. You'll feel a sense of liberation and empowerment that you've never experienced before. You'll be able to pursue your dreams and ambitions without fear of judgment or ridicule, and you'll be able to live life on your own terms, without letting anyone else dictate what you can and cannot do. But don't just take my word for it. Let me share with you a story that illustrates the power of never disclosing what you do. Many years ago, I had the pleasure of meeting a young man named Michael. Michael was a budding entrepreneur with big dreams and even bigger ambitions. But everywhere he turned, he faced doubt and criticism from those around him. His friends and family told him that his business ideas were unrealistic and that he should just stick to a safe and secure job. His colleagues and peers mocked him for his aspirations, telling him that he'd never amount to anything. And even complete strangers would look at him with disdain and skepticism, as if to say, who do you think you are? But you know what Michael did? He never told them what he did. He ignored their doubts and criticisms, and pushed forward with his dreams and ambitions. He worked tirelessly day and night to turn his ideas into reality. And you know what? He succeeded against all odds. Michael built a thriving business empire that not only made him wealthy beyond his wildest dreams, but also allowed him to positively impact the lives of countless people. And do you know what the best part is? Those same people who once doubted and mocked him were now clamoring to be a part of his success. They wanted to bask in his glory and ride the coattails of his achievements. But Michael didn't let them. He stayed true to himself and his philosophy of never disclosing what he did. He didn't seek their validation or approval because he knew that he didn't need it. He was living life on his own terms and that was all that mattered. Now, I'm not telling you this story to brag or to make you feel jealous of Michael's success. I'm telling you this story because it's a powerful example of what can happen when you embrace the mindset of never disclosing what you do. When you stop seeking the approval and validation of others and start living life on your own terms, that's when true success and fulfillment become possible. That's when you're able to tap into your full potential and achieve things that others can only dream of. But it all begins with that shift in mindset, with the willingness to break free from the chains of other people's expectations and limitations, with the courage to pursue your dreams and ambitions without fear of judgment or ridicule. And let me tell you, it's not always easy. There will be times when the doubts and criticisms of others start to creep in, moments when you'll feel like conforming to societal norms and expectations. But in those moments, you have to remember why you started down this path in the first place. You have to recall the dreams and ambitions that once burned brightly within you, and find the strength and resilience to keep pushing forward, no matter the obstacles or challenges. Because at the end of the day, the only opinion that truly matters is your own. The only approval and validation you need is from yourself. And when you embrace that truth, when you live by the philosophy of never disclosing what you do, that's when the doors of opportunity will start to open for you. That's when you'll be able to tap into your full potential and achieve things that others can only dream of. So, what are you waiting for? The time for action is now. The time to take control of your life and live it on your own terms is right here, in this very moment. Don't let anyone else dictate what you can and cannot do. Don't let their doubts and criticisms hold you back from reaching your full potential. Embrace the mindset of never disclosing what you do, and watch as your dreams and ambitions become a reality. It won't be easy, but nothing worth achieving ever is. There will be challenges and obstacles along the way, but with the right mindset and unwavering determination, you can overcome them all. So, go for it, my friends. Embrace the philosophy of never disclosing what you do, and watch as your life transforms before your very eyes. Watch as you break free from the chains of other people's expectations and limitations, and take control of your own destiny. The road ahead won't be easy, but it will be worth it. And at the end of the journey, you'll look back with a sense of pride and accomplishment, 
known that you lived life on your own terms and achieved things that others could only dream of. And let me tell you, when you truly embrace the philosophy of never disclosing what you do, it's like a whole new world opens up to you. A world where limits and boundaries no longer exist, where you're free to dream as big and as boldly as you want, without anyone telling you that it's impossible. Because here's the thing, my friends, the only limits in this life are the ones we impose on ourselves. When we buy into other people's doubts and criticisms, when we let their fears and insecurities become our own, that's when we start to put up walls and boundaries around our dreams and ambitions. But when we embrace the mindset of never disclosing what we do, those walls come tumbling down. We're no longer shackled by the limitations and expectations of others. We're free to soar, to reach for the stars, and to achieve things that others can only dream of. Right now, I know what some of you might be thinking. But isn't it important to listen to advice and feedback from others? Shouldn't we take their perspectives into account? And you're absolutely right. It's important to be open to different viewpoints and to consider the opinions of those who have more experience or expertise than we do. But there's a big difference between listening to advice and letting others dictate what you can and cannot do. When you embrace the mindset of never disclosing what you do, you're not shutting out the world or ignoring the perspectives of others. You're simply choosing to be the ultimate arbiter of your own life, the captain of your own ship. You're willing to listen to advice and feedback, but at the end of the day, you're the one who gets to decide which course to chart. And let me tell you, that kind of self-determination and self-reliance is a quality that is deeply admired and respected by others. People may not always agree with your decisions or your approach, but they respect the fact that you're living life on your own terms, and that you're not letting anyone else dictate what you can and cannot do. But don't just take my word for it. Let me share with you another story that illustrates the power of this mindset. Many years ago, I had the pleasure of meeting a young woman named Sarah. Sarah was a talented artist with a passion for painting and a dream of one day having her work displayed in the most prestigious galleries around the world. But everywhere she turned, she faced doubt and criticism from those around her. Her parents told her that pursuing a career in art was a waste of time, and that she should focus on something more practical and stable. Her friends mocked her lofty ambitions, telling her she'd never make it as an artist, and that she should give up on her dreams. But you know what Sarah did? She never told them what she did. She ignored their doubts and criticisms, and continued to pursue her passion for painting with unwavering determination. She worked tirelessly day and night, honing her craft and perfecting her skills. She sought out mentors and teachers who could help her grow and develop as an artist. But she never let anyone else dictate what she could and couldn't do with her art. And you know what happened? Against all odds, Sarah's talent and hard work paid off. Her painting started to gain recognition and acclaim, and before long, she was being invited to showcase her work in some of the most prestigious galleries around the world. And do you know what the best part is? Those same people who once doubted and mocked her were now clamoring to be a part of her success. They wanted to bask in her glory and ride the coattails of her achievements. But Sarah didn't let them. She stayed true to herself and her philosophy of never telling people what she did. She didn't seek their validation or approval because she knew that she didn't need it. She was living life on her own terms, and that was all that mattered. But it's not just about achieving success and recognition, my friends. The philosophy of never telling people what you do is about so much more than that. It's about living a life of authenticity, a life where you're true to yourself and your values, and where you're not letting anyone else dictate who you are or what you can achieve. Because here's the thing. When we let other people's expectations and limitations dictate our lives, we start to lose sight of who we really are. We start to conform to societal norms and expectations, even if they go against our deepest desires and passions. But when we embrace the mindset of never telling people what we do, we reclaim our sense of self. We're no longer beholden to anyone else's definition of success or happiness. We're free to define those things for ourselves, and to live a life that is truly authentic and fulfilling. And let me tell you, there's nothing more liberating or empowering than that. When you're living life on your own terms, when you're pursuing your dreams and ambitions without fear of judgment or ridicule, you'll experience a sense of joy and contentment that is simply unmatched. But it's not just about personal fulfillment, my friends. When you embrace the mindset of never telling people what you do, you also have the power to inspire and uplift those around you. Think about it. When you have the courage to live life on your own terms, 
To pursue your dreams and ambitions without letting anyone else dictate what you can and cannot do. You're setting an example for others to follow. You're showing them that it's possible to break free from the chains of other people's expectations and limitations, and to live a life of true freedom and fulfillment. Dot. And let me tell you, that kind of inspiration and leadership is something that is sorely needed in this world. Too many people are trapped in lives that they didn't choose for themselves, trapped by the expectations and limitations of others. But when they see someone like you, someone who has the courage to live life on their own terms, it can be a powerful wake-up call. It can be the spark that ignites a fire within them, the inspiration they need to start pursuing their own dreams and ambitions without fear of judgment or ridicule. And before you know it, you'll have started a ripple effect that can change the lives of countless people around you. So never underestimate the power of your example, my friends. When you embrace the mindset of never telling people what you do, you're not just changing your own life, you're changing the lives of those around you too. Of course, none of this is easy. Embracing the idea of never telling people what you do takes guts, resilience, and a determination to stick to your own path. There will be times when others' doubts and criticisms get to you, when you feel like giving in and doing what everyone else thinks you should. But in those tough moments, you've got to dig deep and remember why you started this journey in the first place. Because here's the thing, my friends, you're not alone. Many others have walked this road before you. Think of folks like Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein, and Steve Jobs. They didn't let anyone tell them what they could or couldn't do. They chased their dreams with all they had, even when others doubted them. And look at what they achieved. They changed the world. You can do it too. You're just like them, with big dreams and ambitions. You've got to have the courage to stick to your guns and follow your own path, no matter what. It's not going to be easy, but it's worth it. You'll face challenges, sure, but with the right mindset and determination, you can overcome anything. Remember, you're in charge of your own destiny. Don't let others' opinions hold you back. Embrace the idea of never telling people what you do, and watch your life change for the better. It's all about living life on your own terms and achieving things others can only dream of. So what are you waiting for? Start now and make your dreams a reality. Let me give you the day that turns your life around as quickly as I can. I've broken it down into four parts, and then we're finished for the day. Number one. Disgust. Disgust is a negative emotion, but it can have a very positive, powerful effect. Disgust says, I've had it. What an important day that could be. I've had it. I met a beautiful, powerful, accomplished executive lady in New York. A company invited me to come in and play with the vice president, extraordinary lady. I got an hour, and I found out her story. I asked her, how did you get here, big income, and you never went to college, never went to university. She said, well, let me tell you part of the scenario. She said, when I was a young mother a few years ago, I asked my husband for $10, and he said, what for? He said, before that day was over, I decided I would never ask for yes again. She said, I started studying opportunity, bounded to classes, put myself through school. Did the scenario. Now, I'm vice president. I make a lot of money. And she said, I kept my promise. I never, never, ever asked for yes. Here, it's called the life-changing day. The day you say, enough. You can add an act to it. You're disgusted. A man takes a shotgun to his car, blows out every dent, destroys every tire, puts it on the ground. And it was there that he had driven this embarrassing thing for the last time. And he said, enough is enough. Here's the last furry. Next, the asterisk asterisk decision. Decision making on the life-changing day. If you went home today and, in the next few days, cleaned up a list, the decisions that could furnish enough inspiration for the next five years, ten years. What an inspiring did you bring yourself to decide? The third, the asterisk asterisk desire. Wanting it bad enough, who knows the mystery that we don't know, but here's something I do know. Sometimes, desire waits for a trigger, waits for something to happen. Who knows what the happening may be, a bomb, the lyrics of a movie, the Bible, a seminar, a sermon, a book, an experience, confrontation with an enemy, a conversation with a friend, Bible levels with you. Whatever the experience, it is so valuable. And my best advice, welcome all experience. You never know which one is going to turn every breath. The last, resolve, as I will, the most powerful words in the language. Benjamin Disraeli said, nothing can resist the human will that will stake existence on its purpose. Surely put, I'll do it or die. 
That definition numbers all. I got it from a little junior high girl in Foster City, California. I'm going through some words one day. I got to this one. I asked the kids, who can tell me what resolve means? Some didn't know. Some tried. Interesting. But the laughter was the best. The little girl about third back. I think, I know, mister. Oh, what she said. I think resolve means promising yourself you will never give up. I said, that's the best I've ever heard. She's probably giving some seminar somewhere today, right? That best I've heard. I asked the kid, how long should a baby try to learn how to walk? How long would you give your average baby before you say, enough's enough? No, any mother in the world, they are crazy. My baby is going to keep trying. What, until what? A magic word. Do I want you to write it down? Until. Promise yourself you'll read the books until all your skills change. You'll go to seminars, you get a handle on it. You'll let them do it until it makes sense. You'll go to school until you understand. You'll practice until you develop the skill. Never give up until, however long that is, step by step, piece by piece, book by book, word by word, apple by apple, walk around the block, walk around the block, go for it, all the way. The chance to grow old and resolve that you'll pay the price until you learn, change, grow, become. Then, you'll discover some of life's best treasures when you pay that price. Understanding what you need to know and gathering that information is crucial for leading a good life. Let me tell you about some valuable advice I received from Mr. Shove back in the day. He stressed the importance of studying. That's the key word for making big changes in your life. He said, if you want to be successful, study success. If you want to be happy, study happiness. And if you want to be wealthy, study wealth. It seems like common sense, right? But you'd be surprised how few people actually take the time to do it. It's like a mystery. Why more folks don't make it a priority? Here's the thing. Ideas and information are like golden nuggets that can unlock a better future for you. If you feel like you're missing something in life, it's not because you don't have enough money or opportunities. It's because you haven't come across the right ideas yet. That's something I learned a long time ago, and it's proven to be true time and time again. Speaking of valuable advice, let me share something with you from the Bible. There's a saying in there that goes something like this. Seek and ye shall find. So, the trick is to actively search for the knowledge and insights that can change your life for the better. It's all about being proactive and curious. Now, when you do stumble upon a brilliant idea, don't just rely on your memory to hold on to it. Write it down, record it, make sure it's captured somewhere safe. That's why tools like journals and recording devices are so handy. They help you store and preserve those precious nuggets of wisdom. But let's talk about leaving a legacy for future generations. There are three things I believe are worth passing down. Photographs, books, and journals. Photographs capture moments in time that can tell a story for generations to come. Books contain knowledge and wisdom that have shaped your thinking and values. And journals are like treasure troves of personal insights and reflections that offer a glimpse into your inner world. Don't forget the importance of reflection. Taking time to look back on your experiences and learn from them is like mining for gold in your own life. It's a chance to extract valuable lessons and insights that can guide you on your journey forward. So, whether it's at the end of the day, week, month, or year, make it a habit to reflect on what you've learned and how you've grown. In summary, the path to a fulfilling and successful life is paved with curiosity, study, reflection, and a commitment to passing on valuable knowledge to future generations. It's a journey worth embarking on, filled with endless opportunities for growth and discovery. When my dad was about to turn 76, I told him something interesting. I said, Dad, can you imagine how cool it would be to take all the things you've learned in the last 75 years and use them to make your 76th year amazing? Life isn't just about adding one more year. It's about using all the experiences from the past to make the future even better. Think about it. Every conversation you've had, every experience you've been through, they're all like pieces of a puzzle. When you reflect on them, you can learn from them and make each new conversation or experience even better. The more you learn from your past, the brighter your future can be. Most of us already know what we need to do to make our lives better. But the tricky part is figuring out how to use what we've learned to become the person we want to be. That's where being curious and finding out how things work comes in. You might not be able to do everything you find out, but it's important to learn as much as you can. I met a guy named Mr. Shove when I was 25, and he gave me some great advice. 
He asked me how I've been doing for the past six years, and I had to admit, not very well. He told me that six years was enough time to realize if I was on the right track or not. And when he asked how much money I'd saved, I had to say, none. He made me realize that I needed to change my plan because it clearly wasn't working. Sometimes it can be tough to face our mistakes, but that's how we learn and grow. We can also learn a lot from other people's experiences, both the good and the bad. The Bible, for example, has stories that teach us what to do and what not to do. One of the best ways to learn from others is by reading books and listening to people who have achieved great things. Successful people are often keen readers because they understand the value of learning from others' experiences. So, if you want to make the most of your life, keep learning and growing every day. Curiosity drives them to read because they just have to know. It's something they all have in common. Here's a good phrase. All leaders are readers. They also use cassette programs, especially while they're in the car or during other times when they can't read. Cassettes can help all of us easily pick up new ideas and skills. Did you know there are cassettes and books on how to be stronger, more decisive, a better speaker, a more effective leader, have a better effect on other people, become more loving, develop personality, get rich, develop influence, and become sophisticated? Yet people don't use them. How would you explain that? Some may say they're too busy. But by the time they struggle home from work, it's late. They've got to eat, watch TV, and get to bed. They can't stay up half the night reading or listening. But here's the thing. If you're behind on your bills, being a good worker, sincere, and hardworking might not be enough. You've got to be better than that. You've got to be a good listener, a good reader. At least you could listen to a good cassette on the way home, right? You don't have to spend half the night reading or listening to educational cassettes, although if you're broke, it's a good place to start. But here's all I ask. Just 30 minutes a day. That's all. Stretch it to an hour if you can. But at least 30 minutes. Half rich isn't bad. 30 minutes to hear or read something challenging, something instructional every day. And don't miss a day. You wouldn't miss a meal, would you? But not your 30 minutes. You can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some ideas, examples, and inspiration. There's a Bible phrase that says humans cannot live on bread alone. The next most important thing to bread is words. Words nourish the mind. Words nourish the soul. Humans need food and words to be healthy and prosperous. Make sure you have a good diet of words every day. I once told my staff that some people read so little they have rickets of the mind. And remember, to properly feed the mind, you must have a good balance. Don't just read or listen to the easy stuff. You can't live on mental candy. Here's a thought. Why not call good books and cassettes? Tapping the treasure of ideas. And if somebody's got a good excuse for not tapping the treasure of ideas for at least 30 minutes every day or spending the money and getting the books and cassettes, I'd like to hear it. Some excuses you wouldn't believe. Imagine someone saying, I've got this gold mine. I've got so much gold I don't know what to do with it all. Come over and dig. And the other person says, I don't have a shovel. I'll get you one, says the first person. How much do they want for shovels? Replies the other. The point is, invest the money. Get the cassettes and books. The best money you can spend is money invested in your self-education. Don't shortchange yourself when it comes to investing in your own better future. Mr. Shove got me started on building my library when I first met him. He said to me, become self-educated. Standard education will get you standard results. Check those numbers and see if that's what you want. If you want something better than standard, you must become self-educated. So, I got to work on my library, and now I have one of the best. He recommended a couple of books to get me started. The first one was, Think and Grow Rich, by Napoleon Hill. If you don't have it already, it's a great one to add to your library. Earl Nightingale has put it on cassette. I read it several dozen times. Shelf said, Repetition is the mother of skill. And if you could have seen my bank account at the time, you would have known I needed lots of that kind of repetition. Some of the ideas in that book made major changes in my life. As I look back now, the book was worth thousands, and I bought it for pennies. I learned a very valuable lesson there. There can be a great deal of difference between cost and value. Before I met Mr. Shove, I used to ask, how much does it cost? After I met him, however, I soon learned to ask, how much is it worth? I started basing my life on worth instead of cost, and everything changed. The next book he recommended was on nutrition. He said, study nutrition. 
Vitality plays an important part in doing well. Some people don't do well because they don't feel well. It's not that they're not intelligent, it's that they're ill. They don't have the fire and the vitality to do well. So, he really got on me about nutrition. Now, some of those health books are a bit weird, but you can separate out the weird stuff. There are cassettes on nutrition too. Remember, don't be a follower, be a student. Someone says, I read this book. Should I follow? And the answer is no. Read at least two books and make up your own mind. Don't be a follower, be a student. So, take care of yourself. A person's library of books and cassettes reveals their most dominant desires. It's interesting to walk into someone's house and browse through the library. What does your library say about you? So, read all the books. Now here's the good news. You don't have to read them all at once. Try this. Two books a week. In 10 years, that's a thousand books. If you read a thousand books in the next 10 years, do you think they would greatly influence all the dimensions of your life? The answer is, of course. But here's what's exciting. It's only two books a week. However, I would suggest if you haven't read two books a week for the last 10 years, you are about a thousand books behind. Can you imagine the incredible disadvantage it will be 10 years from now to stride into the marketplace a thousand books behind? Now, the next way to learn from others is to listen. Become a great listener. Get around successful people and listen. Listen to what they say and listen to how they say it. There is something to be said for style as well as content. And never has listening to successful people been easier or less costly than it is today with cassettes like the one you're listening to now. You can own cassette programs by and about the most successful people in any field. And you can listen to their ideas while you do something else. While driving your car, exercising, getting dressed in the morning, anytime. Listening to successful people can be a game changer. Take them out to dinner, ask questions, and most importantly, listen. Even if you need to spend some money on the meal, consider it an investment in your future. Poor people often miss out on this opportunity because they don't see the value in it. They might say, let him buy his own dinner. I'm not spending my money. But remember, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always got. Observing successful people is another powerful way to learn. Success leaves clues. So, pay attention to what they do. Watch how they shake hands, how they interact with others, and how they carry themselves. Successful people have certain habits and behaviors that you can learn from. Investing in your education is crucial. Set aside some money each month to buy books, attend seminars, and listen to lectures. Think of it as an educational fund for your mind and spirit. The money you spend on expanding your knowledge is a small price to pay for the unlimited potential it unlocks. Time is also a valuable investment. Yes, asking for someone's time is a big request, but it's necessary if you want to learn and grow. Make the most of every moment you have by dedicating yourself to learning. Remember, you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. Finally, investing effort is essential. Casual listening won't cut it if you want to truly absorb and apply what you learn. You need to put in the effort to actively engage with the material and apply it to your life. This effort is like turning on the lights, opening the windows, and sharpening your focus. It's what turns your dreams into reality and leads to wealth and happiness. Remember that if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. There's no room for excuses, only action. Take that first step now and watch how your life transforms forever. Thank you for listening.